Hi, I'm Julie Schuck-Snyder, and I'm going to be talking to you about an often forgotten and underappreciated female influencer of the deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA, double helix structure discovery. That is Rosalind Franklin. Now this is a time where women were not expected to be scientists. Her father was strongly against her going into science and wanted her to be a social worker instead. But Rosalind, being a determined and dominant woman, went for it anyway and ended up getting a full scholarship to Cambridge University. Now at Cambridge, she earned a doctorate in physical chemistry and then moved to Paris to study X-ray diffraction techniques. Now X-ray diffraction crystallography is what really put her on the path of finding the structure of DNA. So X-ray crystallography is a scientific method of determining the precise position or arrangements of atoms in a crystal structure. So what happens in X-ray crystallography is an X-ray beams are shot through a crystal of an atom. The crystal causes the beam of the X-ray to kind of diffract in a predictable pattern based on the crystal lattice structure. And this diffraction creates an image like this. Now what's really cool about Rosalind Franklin's work with X-ray diffraction crystallography is she helped pioneer a way not to just use it with single crystals, but to find structure of complex, unorganized matter, which was incredibly complex and hard at the time. So in 1951, Rosalind left Paris and moved back to London to work as a research associate at the King's College. At King's College, Rosalind Franklin was put on a team studying DNA and structure, which was a really hot topic at this time. Also on this team was Maurice Wilkins. Now, Rosalind Franklin was continuing working with X-ray diffraction alongside a student named Raymond Gosling, and they decided to start taking pictures of DNA, and with this they discovered a dry A form and a wet B form. They took pictures of this B form of DNA and produced a photograph that's incredibly famous called Photograph 51. Now, Photograph 51 showed this fuzzy image of pure crystallized DNA, and it showed that it had this double helix structure. So like I said before, DNA was a hot topic at the time, so there were plenty of other scientists competing to find the structure first. Two of these scientists who were also in England were James Watson and Francis Crick. So Maurice Wilkins saw this Photograph 51 and gave it to Crick and Watson without Rosalind's acknowledgement or permission. Watson and Crick, seeing Photograph 51, almost immediately recognized the structure and found it before Franklin did. So Watson and Crick beat her, using her data, and she had no idea that they used it. Now, four years after her death in 1962, Watson, Crick, and Wilkins all received a Nobel Prize for their work on DNA. Now, Nobel Prizes are not awarded posthumously, so she did not receive one. But it still begs the question, would she have received one if she was still alive? Now, Rosalind Franklin's contributions to DNA was never truly acknowledged in her time, so she died without knowing the amazing contribution she made to the scientific community. But today, her discoveries has led to advancements in how we identify criminals, understand the origins of food spoilage, and how we treat diseases. Her discoveries have led to making penicillin, medicines, enzymes, and many biofuels. Today, we still debate over how much credit we should give Rosalind Franklin for discovering DNA. But what we can agree on is that in a time of boundaries and discrimination against women in science, Rosalind Franklin plowed through and pioneered a way for women today to get involved in science and pursue STEM and help change the world for a better.